Count it down. Three, two. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Got to get my things in order, making sure I'm getting on the right. Shim, Green Day's performance undoubtedly the best. Cool, we're at that. Going okay, here podcast. we go. Yeah, go ahead. No, it's already started, so go ahead. You're an I'm, asshole. I'm officially going to have this in the podcast, so go right ahead. Uh, history of rock, fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, do the intro. It's the history. Welcome to the history of rock. His name is Brandon. He's the DJ. His name is Shim. He is the rock star. Class is not in today. Session. Yeah, not today. The rock Fucking... stars make mistakes. You never made a mistake on stage. That wasn't a mistake. That was a conscious choice. <laughs> it's just there are certain things that are for you and certain things that are for the crowd, and oh. never the two shall meet. Oh. Mm. All right. I feel so where special. are we at? Go ahead. You go and do the real work, and I'll just start writing the shit that you. There you go. Out, like the real work, turn. like getting merchandise made, like this T-shirt right here for anybody watching. Look <laughs> I'm wearing the shirt right now. If you want to pick one Fuckin of these a. bad boys up, just go to vivalamocha.com, and at the top, is it comfortable? Is it oh, nice, fuck. beautiful cotton? It's American so, made. There's a reason that I ponied up the extra dollar fifty for the shirts because. I, I am a stickler. I'm a stickler for shirts. If a, if a t-shirt doesn't fit right, I could wear it once. I will never wear that fucking thing again. I, I, I'm mm. super weird about it. It has to fit just right. Oh, hey, Brandon. Recording not, in progress. Oh! <laughs> That's what you get. God That's what it. you get for trying to fuck me on the front end. Recording in progress. I'm that just sounded gonna a bit sexy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that out. Yeah, it's better in the back end. Whoa. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah. So I don't there's I, anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's the, the, your life. Uh, your life Going is your life. Going back to our cross should bear. judge you whatsoever. Con- continue talking about how that cotton rubs beautifully oh, against your skin. Oh my god, it feels so fucking amazing. <laughs> um, but that's a, so. I mean, in all seriousness, I am a fucking stickler for t-shirts. If I have a shirt and it doesn't fit right, I will never fucking wear it again. I don't care who bought it for me. I don't care what it is of. I got to be comfortable uh, comfortable in my t-shirts. The t-shirts at Viva La Mocha, I, that's half my wardrobe because of that, because they all fit amazing, and I absolutely love them. Uh, so if you want, go to VivaLamoca.com. At the top, there's the Real Brandalorian link. Click that, and you can purchase. We have these shirts. We have uh, the hit. I, I'm Fuck, I would be a terrible weather guy. I cannot point to save my life. Other so. way. Other way. No, it's right, it's right there. there. The no, you're going... Pot, like sure. What? That's what I'm pointing at. I'm oh, pointing. Oh, at, I thought you were pointing at. I thought you were pointing at the album cover. No, 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 no. So the, the the logo here that we have those t-shirts as well. Plus there's a brand Lorian logo, and then right there, um, <laughs> that is the that's what we're talking about today. So again, if you're here on YouTube, make sure you uh, click like, subscribe, all that fun stuff for us. You guys will see that thing pop up periodically. If you're listening yeah. on Apple or Google and hear this weird like click 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 click. Quick, quick. That's not Shim and I. That's actually the the little uh, Twitch, the little video thing that I put up there, so that we can do this. And thing. then uh, and go to me, Viva La Morca for the shirts. Just said that. We got the link. We got the link. No, but I'm saying you got the link down there. Oh, uh, no. But I can't. yeah, you got to put the link in the description. Who clicks links anymore? Just type Viva La Mocha.com. Oh, no one's... Di- I didn't read... Okay, so now we're going to have a work conversation in the middle of the podcast. We have oh. to put the link for him. You oh. can't expect people to type that shit in. Oh, okay. I remember that. Yeah, we'll put the link in. Okay. And then, um, yeah, go for it. All right, so uh, we're talking Woodstock 94. We've covered uh, uh, 69 in a couple of episodes. This one, however, this is episode two. And we're going to be doing two more episodes here. So it'll make three episodes. There's your math for the day. Because I found online, it's a 1994 blog from right. Ram Samudrala. And I need to find the link also to, to his blog so that we can give him credit for what we're reading on here. But it's his firsthand account. And it's not yeah. necessarily in order. Like, you'll notice here we start with Green Day. And towards the bottom is when he kind of starts talking about Friday. Because, you know, it's... It almost works in reverse of, I think, where his train of thought was at. Um, but we can dive right into this thing. So, And, and again, I also kind of warned Shim about this a little bit, is that I try to keep the notes two to three lines max. These are lengthy paragraphs that we're going to be reading. So we're going to try to get through them and make sure that it's not just constant interruptions. But So... Just to be clear, this is us basically paraphrasing what someone else said. This yep. is an actual account of what happened on the day. Yep. So this is not our opinion. This is us no, saying what someone when the else dude said. Gets that to, was he's on the like, day. nine inch nail sucks. Yeah. I mean, so he I wanna, when I say the words, yeah, we're, I'm speaking this in the. I just don't want to piss off any of my friends if it comes down to guys that I met back then. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Like, Green Day's performance was shit. No. 
here we go. Green Day's performance on stage was undoubtedly the best visually. A punk band, I don't think their music is anything spectacular compared to the innovative punk along the lines of The Levelers and Fugazi. In fact, they are so stereotypically punk that it almost seems like they are parodying it. Fuck! Right. The lead singer and drummer had brightly colored blue and green hair and their lyrics are whiny. But they were tireless on stage and pushed the momentum to its limits. The best thing about their show was that they had a mud fight on stage with the audience. The first mud pack was thrown at vocalist Billy Joe Armstrong. He promptly caught it and put it in his mouth. This simply encouraged people to throw more. The crew of the band came on stage and started throwing stuff back. Wavy Gravy, the announcer for the South stage, also followed suit by doing the same thing, throwing mud back and eating it. So that kind of sums up what something that we had already known was the whole mud. Th- and you can find this one. <clears throat> it's kind of difficult finding Woodstock 94 footage, like full performances and stuff. But uh, I believe Green Day can be found. Uh, in the previous right. episode, we had talked about Jackal and we talked about uh, Jesse James Dupree coming out and basically just kind of shooting a gun in the air and he cut himself so bad. He was bleeding everywhere and they hauled his ass off stage. Yeah. I, for the life of me, could not find that footage. So when this episode finally drops, if I still haven't found it, if anybody out there, if you can find a YouTube link, send that shit to me because I want to <laughs> see the Jackal performance. There's bits and pieces, but I haven't been able to find the full footage of of jackal performing at woodstock 94 but going back here to uh the blog things got really out of control as audience members climbed on stage and security people tried to stop them it was a futile effort there was total and utter chaos one little kid ran on stage hugged armstrong and started running away but the singer chased after him and brought him back to sing a few lines i bet that made that kid's day Running around on stage had its problems, however, as bassist Mike Durnt, as you know, Durnt, 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 Durnt. Uh, as Mike Durnt discovered, as the show ended, the security people mistook Durnt running around for one of the stage crashers and tried to knock him out, very oh. much against his insistence that he belonged to the band. It was the most out of control show I saw, yet nothing violent happened, and the security people and the audience made peace afterward, though I hear Durnt lost three of his teeth. And this was written on the day, like the, the day after, like he saw yeah, that shit. Yeah, he, I mean, he was probably, I, I, again, I'm a man, I, I could probably reach out to this guy and we can get his, his firsthand account. Um, is I would imagine that he was probably taking notes kind of periodically throughout. And what's really cool about this blog, when he gets to the end, he kind of gives a heads up as, hey, if you're looking to do a festival like this, here's some pointers. Like one of the pointers is don't bring a bunch of shit. Like you're there for three days, plan on not sleeping and don't bring a bunch of stuff. He's like, I brought my tent and that just ended up being something I had to carry around. Um, Right. And just plan on not sleeping do a bunch of blow and just stay up for 72 hours no i'm kidding he doesn't say the cocaine right. thing uh but right. he does say like just kind of that's plan just on not sleeping. your personal recommendation yeah fucking cocaine after the, Woo! after the green day show people tried to get back to the north stage except that there was a fence around the concert area and it slowed things down i know In a spectacular a fence. <laughs> a fence fuck There was one left. In a spectacular moment of cooperation, the people, including me, at the fence yelled, everyone step back, and the whole crowd stepped back in unison. The fence was down in a minute. (laughs) Contrast this behavior to what happens when people in front are getting crushed and the audience is asked to step back. No one does. I guess we have our priorities straight, huh? Yeah. I just found it so funny that this dude was talking about, how, oh, there's a fence in the way. So we were just like, hey, back up. Let's just fucking tear this bitch down. And they did. Yeah. And, that's and no how- one asked questions. Everyone universally understood. It's yeah. like sign language. This is yeah, exactly we're gonna, what yeah, we're doing yeah, here, yeah, man. Gonna, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he goes on to say, as I walked away, I could hear the Paul Rogers band, who I chose to miss since Brian May from Queen didn't show. By the way, I got to interview Paul Rogers and... One of the nicest gentlemen on the planet. And it's hilarious because with his uh, accent, he would say, like, I was my on-air name being Goat. He was like, well, let me answer that question, Goat. Oh, yeah. Every time, dude. It was great. Oh, it was great. Um, So anyway, so uh, uh, Brian May chose not to show up, but Slash was the guitarist and Jason Bonham as the drummer covering Bad Company tunes. They sounded pretty good. One of the themes of the festival was... Feel like making love. Down, down, down. 
feel like making love. Sorry. Again, this was an example of why Brandon is not the singer in anyone's band. What? No, what it actually reads is this is an example of a group I don't really like, but someone who put on a good show. They said it was the largest crowd they had ever played in front of. And I think this holds true for most performers there. The lead singer was funny when he tried to do acrobatics on stage, like tumbling and high jumping and failed clumsily. The crowd really got into them as they finished up with two princes. Oh, shit. Actually, I forgot. I, del- um, I forgot to put it back in there. So there he was talking about the That's what she doctors. said. Hey, all. Uh, yeah. I forgot I'd actually deleted um, the, the I was going to say, line. I was just, I was reading, I was reading that point, waiting for it to come down to the point because you set me up like a bitch just then and everyone watching thinks Shim's having a stroke. I do that actively all the time. Do you smell yeah. burnt toast? Let's just go to the next paragraph. What the fuck is that smell? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so after the spin doctors, it was Perry Farrell and porno for pyros. Which, again, we talked about with Lollapalooza, some of those bands, they jumped off the Lollapalooza tour to make sure they could go do Woodstock. Porno for Pyros was the first time I heard Perry Farrell. I didn't know. I I caught most bands in reverse. Like, I didn't really. I listened to Foo Fighters before Nirvana. Like, I was just young enough to catch that second wave of everything. So Porno for Pyros I heard of. But being a half a world away kind of affects that, too, don't you think? It does, but it's not good for like your social standing in school when they're like, "Hey, that drummer, the, the, the drummer in that band looks like the singer from Foo Fighters," and like, "You're out, get, fuck off, get away from us, get off the stairs. You don't hang yeah. out in this part of the quadrangle anymore." But that's that kind of stuff. It, it's always destined to happen. It's like when was it was it was it Kanye that had Paul McCartney on a track, and then all of a sudden all these tweets were coming out from these idiot kids who were like, "Oh, this yeah, Paul yeah. McCartney guy is going to be huge." Yeah. And I say idiot kids jokingly because kids are stupid. We don't know any yeah. better. I mean, when I was yeah. 14, 15, 16 years old, there's a ton of songs that I'm willing to bet they were covers that you don't know. It's because you don't know any better. But this is how that. you no, get here's introduced the... to it. Okay, sidebar. But it is it, – that's, that's a bad example. This is a – it's a prime example because you are 100% right. Yeah. If Kanye – I know. If, Con, uh, if Kanye <laughs> was in a music video – with someone who wasn't over 70 fucking years old. If the guy was like 40, you'd be like, wow, that's a lucky break for that nobody. The guy's 75, you'd be like, why is he put, maybe, this- maybe, just fucking maybe, mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. the guy's done a thing or two in his entire fucking life and there's a mm-hmm. second part of the sentence. There's a reason. Don't get all black hand lady with me. What's with the fucking, mm-mm, what's this shit? I'm actually, fucking, I, got distra- right, go. I got distracted because like doing this, it looks like one of those old uh, P. Diddy videos, the way my lighting is set up. Oh yeah, you're <laughs> right, it does, hey. <laughs> Uh, oh, anyway, yeah. what the fuck was I going to say? Oh, but see, I'm a rap black shit and take uh, all the money. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, no, so, but Paul McCartney, he doesn't look old. Like, he doesn't look no. 80. No. Do you, you know? want to know why? Because he's vegan. Because he has not suffered a day of stress since he was 21 years old. Yeah, because he's like, not even the real Paul McCartney. He was the guy that came in as a lookalike when the real Paul McCartney died. It's all oh, in Strawberry Jesus. Fields, man. <laughs> all right, that's a long shot. What, let's get back to is it. Oh, me? yeah. Oh, so Perry after Farrell. Spin, oh, uh, who put on one of the better performances. Doctors. Two scantily clad female dancers on stage who were uh, really erotic, made out with each other during the performance. A female acrobat spiced up an already quirky show. Cool, isn't what, Perry Farrell tours, his wife is one of those dancers, right? He tours with his wife. I don't know. I've heard that his wife is a dancer or acrobat, and that's how that whole thing got started. Or maybe they met on the tour. We should check that out. Something we probably should anyway. have learned in Jane's Addiction, but yeah. Yeah, but who cares about anything that Jane does? Oh, it's Perry Farrell got my attention when he started talking about crop circles. Yes. I thought he would then start talking about UFOs, but instead he talked about chaos which I thought was truly brilliant since it is believed that crop circles are an instance of chaotic behavior in natural systems. Yes, some education for the crowd here. He ended up by saying chaos is beautiful. Amen. Yes, we will be covering crop circles at the end of the of the podcast. Yeah, that's why that's in <laughs> italics. Sorry. It's all right. Was I not supposed to read that? No, 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 no. Maybe. You were because that's so you know how normally we'll do a um Encore. Uh, yeah, no, not an encore, but at the oh, end, God. it's always like an on this date kind of a thing. 
Yeah, We're yeah. not going to do it on this date. I wanted to cover crop circles because after reading that, this dude was like, crop circles uh, are an instance of chaotic behavior in natural systems. No, it's fucking not. No, no it's, it's not. not. It's, it's No, it's, completely... it's fucking... It was, it was two guys with a fucking stick and a piece of rope. That's what the crop no, circles were. It's aliens. Okay. Jesus fucking... It's Christ. definitely fucking aliens, dude. Have you not seen them from space? They're gigantic I mean, and perfect. Signs? signs? Yeah. Yeah. We can get into it. Yeah. I just went all the way up there. That's how yeah. I, that's how much I give a shit about it. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, go ahead. Now Bob we go Dylan. into, as we talked uh, previously, Bob Dylan was amazing. He was one and a half hours late, but it was worth the wait. He came on stage and jammed his stuff in, in an irreverent manner and walked out. No hello or thank you. I was only tangentially familiar with his music before I saw him live, but he got everyone rocking and his guitar playing was what stood out the most, which is interesting because we had said in the previous episode that one of the things with Bob Dylan is that he was playing lead guitar in a mostly yeah. kind of electric rock set that wasn't really mm -hmm. his forte. So to have that stand out to this guy is pretty badass. Mm -hmm. He was one of two surprises for me at the festival in terms of how good he was. The other was Aerosmith. People were even moshing and crowd surfing to him. That's Heck, awesome. People were moshing and crowd surfing when there was no music being played. That does not shock me at all. No, it's fucking Woodstock. That's called that's called our good friend ecstasy. Um, the crowd roared when he sang Everybody Must Get Stoned. See what I'm talking about? There was tons of drugs floating around, ranging from marijuana to various colored versions of acid. I was offered to try some out, but I declined. Pussy. The girl behind me during the entire Sunday show was tripping. She was one of the people who lived across the river and got in for free. And I bet her entire experience was living in the peace and love dream. But mine was all about the music. Yeah, because you got to be clean, man. By the way, a uh, quick side note here. Uh, I started again. Uh, have you ever listened to the podcast Science of Verses? No. Nah. Oh yeah, I'm fantastic! Yeah, 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 fantastic fucking yeah. podcast. And I, the girl on it, she's got a pretty thick accent. But anyway, I was going to say Australian, but I'm probably wrong, and I didn't want to commit to that. But now I am, so yes, I, I think it might be. I don't fucking know. But I'm there was one was where they were talking that. about how they're using shrooms now to treat depression and anxiety, and it was Dude, fascinating. Psychedelics, psychedelics are coming up in a big fucking way. Like in the last ten years, it was like okay, marijuana is going to become really you know more um mainstream PC. because it's, because you mainstream can buy it in PC. a store exactly mainstream is the word i was looking for acid is going to be the next thing in 10 20 years that they're going to be it's going to be mainstream as well but it's oh, like yeah, but dude, you can't time. drive your car on acid dude no no and <laughs> see and this is this is what's going to make that very difficult because being on like acid or shrooms it's it's i mean i would hope that it would just be to the point where people are like yeah i'm in for the night or like yeah i'm not fucking going anywhere because that was yeah. always the, one of the big arguments behind marijuana and legalizing it was, well, we have ways to test if there's alcohol in your system and you're driving. We need to have a similar system so that we can test if you're high on marijuana. Although the, yeah. the breathalyzer tests that they have are, are wrong a lot. We learned that from our lawyer friend. Um, but yeah, it was just it was fascinating listening to this one. Uh, what? We learned that. Who, what's, who's we? Oh, Who's sorry. your lawyer friend, and why show. did you learn it? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. The the morning show that I was on, I totally fucking spaced on that. Woo! Because I thought you were, I thought you were dragging me into some no, memory no, no, that no, you no, sort no, of no. like, no, been like, like, remember that time when we drove fucking high? I'm like, whoa, I wasn't there. Where for we that. got way fucked up. We were doing like 105. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, so so we do a segment uh, on the morning show that I was on. It was called Ask a Lawyer, and Justin Underwood, our good friend, the lawyer, would come in, and he would tell us, it's he's like, yeah, together. he's been there so many times where. You go to like look at one of those machines and the way it's calibrated, he goes, and it's fucking wrong. It's wrong yeah. a lot. Um, right. So anyway, so that was one of those big things. But again, back to this podcast, it was fascinating because apparently that there is legitimacy behind the whole shrooms, and I, I, I've even looked into like the ketamine treatment as well to kind of help with depression and anxiety. Mm. And they haven't been able to pinpoint what it is. It's not guaranteed. Like there are some people who. It does not fix the issues for. But one of the things that they talked about when it comes to the shrooms is it's a massive dose that they're giving you. Like if you're doing one of these trials and they're going to give mm. you psychedelic mushrooms like psilocybin in order to conquer yeah. like your depression, 
it's a right. huge fucking dose. So you have to make sure. And, but uh, that, on top of that, the guys are like, well, yeah, the, the only thing is it's shrooms are not addictive and you're not going to die from it. Like, unless right. you go, you you're know, just going to have a real bad time if you take the wrong trip. Well, and, and but it also it's kind of like what they say with alcohol, where it just depends on what your mood is going into it. Which is weird because I was hearing that I was like, well, if you're depressed, doesn't that mean it's going to be a shitty trip? Not apparently, That's um, because they said that they're, like everybody has all different kinds of trips, and the thing that they said about the people who had the bad trips, mm-hmm. those people still had their depression solved. Like it's st- it still became a solution. Are to you considering this doing this? Fuck yeah, <laughs> dude! Are you kidding when? me? When I don't when? know. I can't. I mean, I live in Texas. We're like our fucking laws suck. Dude, if there was a way that I could do it and it's controlled and it would help me with my Meet depression with me and anxiety, in Cali. there'll be I there'll would be do someone in, in Cali. Fucking heartbeat. There's definitely going to be some place in LA. All right. There's all that shits around serious, LA. When I let's do it. All right, serious question. And you yeah. can you can you can choose not to respond. You can plead the fifth. Yep. You know, do you know what plead the yep. fifth means down in Australia, mate? Yeah, yeah. It's, I've watched the movies. Okay. <laughs> I've yes. seen TV shows. Um Yeah. You ever done shrooms? No. Not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not going to, and I'm not saying I am going to. I'm just saying I haven't done them yet. Oh, I did, and it's but, fucking <laughs> awesome. But I don't know do that, drugs. Like, the, don't do drugs. No, but the reason that I don't really smoke weed is because I don't like where it takes me. The reason that I will drink when I drink is because I, it where it takes me is like I I relax. I don't get stressed out. I don't fucking think too much. When on the times when I smoke weed. I just think too much. And I always go back to like, I'm, I'm that guy that always goes back to, oh God, you remember that time when you were 15 and you said that stupid fucking thing. And then that, that chick just dumped you immediately. It's cause you're a piece of shit and you still are. And I'm like, wow, where'd that Damn, come from? And dude. I'm like, yeah. Cracking the fucking whip. No, I, uh, yeah. shit. I'll tell it on the podcast. Hi mom. Um, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, we did, we did shrooms one time and we weren't going anywhere. We stayed in this person's apartment. I'm not going to, you know, call out the, the person that I did them with. Um, but, uh, you know, we just, we hung out there, we watched movies and it was fucking awesome. Um, yeah. fight club felt like an entire lifetime. I, sw- I, dude, I'm fucking not joking, man. I watched fight club and when the movie was over, I looked at my friend and I was like, did that feel like it took a few years? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Like it felt <laughs> like it took forever, but there was no But complaints. in a good it way? Was, oh, fuck. It was awesome, yeah. man. And right. then we watched, have you ever seen Resident Evil? Mm, the yeah. first movie, the, fir- the very first yeah, yeah. Resident Evil movie. So there's yeah. this scene where you have the little arms and they're moving the test tubes around and it's kind of zooming in. And I remember yeah, we, so the, the second movie we watched was Resident <laughs> Evil because we were like, hey, we're feeling good. This is awesome. Let's yeah. ramp this bitch up. So we start to watch Resident Evil. And I remember that scene and we were like sinking in our chairs. Yeah. And then when the scene was no. over, we sat back up. We sat back up and I'm like, I want to watch that again. And he was like, I want to watch that too. Because oh, it was like, it felt, it felt like a ride. It would, again, don't do drugs, kids, but it was fucking no. awesome. But don't do drugs. <laughs> I love that. Those are jokes. It was fucking awesome. But Look, don't I mean, do them. I'm not gonna fuck. Like, I'm not gonna bullshit about it. But you know, yeah. like, like, there's things that you like you need to be careful about, and there's things that you should and should not do. But yeah, yeah, if there was a possibility to to not to do this to fucking solve this fucking crippling depression and anxiety that I do, yeah, with dude, on a daily look, basis. Got- Hell as yeah. far as I'm concerned, the only thing that I say about that is if you got a free pass. If you think that something's going to help you with the struggle that you're facing in your life, as long as you're not hurting someone else, do what you got to do, man. Fucking A, Mike. Whatever fucking works for you. All right. Back to Woodstock 94. So we're jumping right into your favorite band here. A few light bulbs appeared on stage and they weren't dim bulbs either. Red Hot Chili Peppers really livened up what must have been a tired crowd with their light bulb costumes, which they took off after a couple of tunes, and their charismatic, funky sound. Another Mm -hmm. theme for the festival was Give It Away, which happened a lot when water bottles were thrown from the TV towers, which is where I hung out most of the time. Food was shared, and a helping hand was given whenever needed. People showed concern when I cut my leg. I was barefoot, on a, uh, and I cut it on a piece of glass, and when I had to crouch down for a minute with my flashlight in order to get rid of the piece of glass. Ouch. That's got to suck. Chili Peppers came Chili Peppers came back for an encore dressed in white, Jimi Hendrix style. 
complete with afros and a little girl, Flea's daughter, sang the first minute of the national anthem. See, that's redeeming. That's awesome. Like, the thing that I do love about the Chili Peppers is that you can tell they've always had fun. And Flea is one of the guys that, like, every time you hear Flea speak, he is just so clearly zen, grateful for his life, mm. positive. Mm, like, I don't know. I've never Not seen when he it. took Princess never- Leia, man. Oh, you! I haven't seen that. Thanks for ruining it. <laughs> it's in the first unbelievable. episode. I haven't we seen the first episode. We talked about it. I put that in one no, of the No, you said uh, that he was in the episode. You said Flea was in it, and I had forgotten until this moment. You're such a prick. <laughs> Dude, when are you going like, to watch it? Let it go. Holy shit. Give it away. A- I work for a living, bitch. And I don't. <laughs> the Chili Peppers here. It's up to you. The strains of Zar. The strains of Zar. Oh, the strains of Zar heralded the arrival of I don't know of Peter Gabriel, who put on the best performance, both visually and musically. It was incredible to listen to the crowd chanting "In Your Eyes" at around 1 a.m. in the morning, with thousands and thousands of brightly lit candles waving around. The daring and innovative performance is the reason why Gabriel was the headliner for the entire show. In or is it possible your that the, eyes. the reason that he was the headliner was because they he was able to perform that type of innovative performance was because they paid him as the headliner. Probably. Just think about it for a second. The festival was appropriately renamed Mudstock when the thunderstorms came Saturday afternoon. I had to go across the North Stage in order to get to the Wiz. What? To get to the Wiz, so I could get a couple of disposable cameras. What the fuck is the Wiz? Like, the, is that what he called? I think it was like a store or something that they had there. Okay, disposable. He, pur- he purchased a couple of disposable this, cameras. This is yeah, disposable cameras to capture it on film. Took me a couple of hours to get back and forth. Damn. During which I managed to see Joe Cocker, where he did the classic with a little help from my friends. He said, "Everyone needs some. Everyone needs some to get through the night and day." And I am greatly indebted to everyone who has helped me out. See you in 2019. 2019 never happened because they weren't able to put together a 50th anniversary show together. That was something that Joe Cocker apparently said. uh, He was like, see you in 2019. Because obviously this being the 25th anniversary, 2019 would be the 50th anniversary. uh, Were they going to do it? Were they going to? Yeah. I mean, there was talks. And as as the summer began, all of a sudden, everybody was kind of like, we haven't really heard anything about about Woodstock. Like, are, are they not yeah. gonna, like? Did Limp Biscuit really fuck it up for everybody at Woodstock '99? Why does Was everyone that blame Limp? Uh, no, it, it, when you get into it, it's not all Limp Biscuit's fault, it's by not. the way. No, it's like not. when you start to research it a bit, which Brandon's just filled me in. I'm like, but Limp Biscuit literally takes the brunt of. It's, like, I remember. Here's the thing. I'll tell you. Okay, sidebar. I'm going to tell you the memory that I have. From Limp Bizkit and what happened the first year. Hold on. That I was, what? You you have to start this with a Fred Durst, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Get the fuck. Wait, wait. Um, wait, Get I, the fuck up. No, it's going to be. It's gonna be yeah. Fuck <laughs> it. Sorry. Well, I guess it will be yeah. nice. If I could touch your body. If I touch your body. I know not everybody. I always thought it was weird that he me. sang that way. In the first album, he sang with this, yeah, oh. he did that weird fucking trail off, like, like, did you, do you remember that? Yeah. He was like, oh, everybody, my life, me. And I'm like, and then it wasn't there on Significant Other. And I was like, thank fucking God you got rid of that thing. It wasn't really there it on was, counterfeit. It was on counterfeit. Yeah, on counterfeit. <laughs> so anyway, fucking this show should literally be relabeled like, Fuck Fred. <laughs> Why? I like Limp Biscuit. Uh, I love Limp Biscuit. They were my favorite band. Literally. Um, here's the deal. When they go, when they fucked up, uh, 1999, there was a band in Australia called Powderfinger. For anyone in Australia that knows, they're a really great band, but they're that a hot like a AC cocaine rock reference. band. Totally is. They're a hot AC band. They're like acoustic pop rock, right? And they're a fantastic band, but they're not the headliner for the big day out. Limp Biscuit was the headliner, and then they fucking pulled out of shit right after uh, that that year, after Woodstock went south. And I bought tickets thinking this is going to be great. I'm going to get to go see Limp Biscuit, and then instead I got stuck with a fucking ticket to see Powderfinger, which was the exact <laughs> opposite experience. You know what I mean? Like, 
You go on to see Limp Biscuit break stuff, and then instead you see Powderfinger go, "No, let's let's remember to be kind to one another now." Ah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. What I'm talking, and I love. Don't get me wrong, I love Powderfinger, but that ain't what I paid That's, for. Yeah, it's not the experience. Don't that give you me were, Pepsi and call it Coke. Wow, Pepsi. Go on, let it hang. Oh, let wait, the fucking no, awkwardness like, okay. of that comment hang. No, I got you. I got you. Just go ahead. Flip yeah, yeah. Just go. Um. Next. Yeah. Well, hold on. Really. So, what's Doc Dynia? I think one of the reasons Limp Biscuit gets the uh, the brunt end of the blame for it is the song breaks. Because that's why you want to hate me. And he's yeah, and it's it's the break your fucking face tonight and all that other shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and a the the name Limp Biscuit is kind of funny. Um, and right. it's just and it's and it and they were kind of the they became the joke in the sort of early to mid two thousands. Like yeah. after um, Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water, and then you remember Wes Borland left the band, and they did that whole guitar uh, guitarist search by going to guitar centers across America, and uh, shit, it was the guitar center right down the street from my house where he got pasted with the pie. Somebody came up and just blasted him with a uh, with a fucking pie, but they yeah. kind of became the joke, I, and it's and music yeah. does this. Music goes through these cycles where there's something that was fucking huge and then it becomes the joke because either the people who liked it don't have the balls to either still like it or they realize, eh, maybe that wasn't the best. But rather than standing up and defending like, yeah, I fucking listened to Limp Bizkit. I still listen to Limp Bizkit. They're too much mm. of pussies to defend the music that they were listening to because now they're like, oh, yeah. so I'm going to go listen to a bunch of bitch music now. Like, I'm going to go like uh, crank fucking Imagine Dragons up. Oh, wait, no, Imagine Dragons now. They're thinning the fucking brunt end of these Oh, jokes. yeah, you're right. Wow, that's an interesting thing. What's I wrong with Imagine actually, Dragons? They're, they're a great band. And um, but I remember I like watching uh Green Day and back in back in 2000, they were like, everyone was asking every band, so okay, well, it's nice you got a new record out, but um, what do you think of Limp Biscuit? Because everyone wanted to get the fucking clickbait. Yeah, and Green Day was like, We hate this shit, it's a bunch of poser, it's not what music's about. And then Billy Corgan came up and he was I, I, I actually had way more respect for Billy Corgan after his answer because he said music's about pushing boundaries and the fact that there is a band that's mixing rock and rap and hip hop is fantastic and I wish them all the luck in the world. I don't personally like it, but I think that they should keep doing exactly what they're doing. Yeah, see, I and like I Billy was like, Corgan. I just don't like his, his voice, unfortunately. But I no, like no, him, but like the person that he is and, and the influence that he's had, the guy is fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah, and that, and that really is the best way to look at it. Like they're not knocking, they're not coming to your door and knocking down, being like, "We're going to break stuff." Like you have to fucking push the button, play. Yeah, and then you know what I mean. So fucking don't push play. There's an okay, um, really quick before I get to this next line here because we're going to talk about Blind Melon, but there is an old rumor, and I don't know if this one is true or not. And I hate bringing up kind of rumors like this on the podcast, but I'm prefacing this with I can't base this in fact because I don't know if it is a fact or not. But there was a rumor that in the late 90s, I believe it was Maynard and it might have been Tom Morello and they were all kind of hanging out together. And mm. the video for Limp Bizkit, one of their songs came on and one of them looked at the other and he was like, you know, you guys are the reason that that's a thing now, right? <laughs> and then the other one was like, no, you're the reason that that's a thing because it kind of like they're saying like that they they... What they started in the early '90s, what what is what spawned Limp Biscuit by the late '90s, and I yeah. again, I don't know if that's actual based in fact, but that was something that always sort of uh, was told in radio rock radio circles where people would you know yeah. bring that up. Could be complete bullshit. Creed is another perfect example. With arms was, open. I was listening to just a fucking playlist while I was writing some shit. And then the song came on, and I'm like, damn, that's a dope fucking riff. What is this? Production Dude, Tremonti good. is and, the shit. And I was like, oh, it's Creed's most recent record, which was the least successful because it was after the breakup and the reunion thing. And I was like, damn, they went heavy on that Are you record. sure it wasn't Alter Bridge? No, it was Creed. Because it was Scott it was the, Yeah, 100%. Oh. I, I clicked it. I went and looked, and I was like, what band is I this? And I went it. Creed, and I'm I like, I don't it. know this Creed song. So I was like, yeah, and... but. I was like, I fucking like this shit. Like, I didn't dislike Creed at the beginning, but I was like, this new shit is dope. And the, and you hear his voice and you go, oh, that's right. That's got... And then you go, actually, he's a good singer. Everyone took a massive fucking dump on them when they were... But it's one of those things where the moment you reach the top of the mountain, there is no other option but to be torn down. Yep. So fuck everyone. Dude, like, 
I've been on interviews uh, with Scott Stapp a few different times, and he's always just an amazing human being. Like he's always been super right. cool. The guy went through a ton of shit dealing with his life and, and just uh, a lot of the things that he was going with, the battles internally that he was going through, uh, but he was always super cool. And he even told us one time that his kid would kind of make fun of him and his singing style around the house. Like his kid would be like, <laughs> Dad, can I have some cornflakes? Like that. <laughs> And and he was willing to admit it, and he would sing it, and he would he would poke fun at himself, and and you could That's tell good. like uh, hopefully he's in, uh, you know, a better place now, and I I will defend that guy um, as as much as I need to because anybody wants to knock Creed or they want to knock Scott Stab, you don't know who that guy is, you don't know the shit he's been through, you don't know how good they were, and again like Tremonti, that dude's fucking guitar playing Dude, is on a he's... whole other level. That yeah, dude's it's the dark. shit. But anyway. So back to uh, Woodstock 94. So uh, next online was Blind Melon, who also put on a great show. Vocalist Shannon Hoon resembled, a jo- uh, resembled Joplin a lot, meaning Janis Joplin, complete with the white dress and barrettes. After their show, Tom Arnold of True Lies was one of the surprise guests. This is a thing that I'm glad I found this blog, because other than this, I had not read anything about this happening. And right. he introduced his co-star of True Lies, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who turned out to be Chris Farley from Saturday Night Live flexing his muscles. That you can, is amazing. You can find this online. Like You can hear um, them introducing Cypress Hill, which leads us to the next, the next, uh, next uh, note here. Cypress Hill were next, and the singer smoked a joint on stage, no way, for all the people getting high. Pigs was definitely a popular tune among the crowd, Even I was amazed at the crowd response for this tune. One Saturday Night Live writer said they probably had the best message among all the Saturday bands. Saturday Night Live writer? Anyway. They were one of the few bands actually promoting aggression. The singer remarked that the sight he saw when he flew down was amazing. Really? They they weren't promoting aggression. Uh... Interesting. See, I, that, again, that's one of those things that I wasn't quite. And then Henry Rollins, sure. though. Let's go yeah. to Henry Rollins because that motherfucker promotes some aggression. Henry Rollins' tattooed body was the object of admiration by many. Rollins was strongly anti drug and anti alcohol, and this surprised a lot of people. But he's amazingly clean cut, even though he doesn't appear so. Yeah, that's. Um, oh, shit. That, that's a big thing. Um, he's a straight edge. Yes, yeah, there you go. Straight edge. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he's a straight edge. Yeah. Uh, way, if you ever mixed- straight straight edges are the dopest fucking people. If you get a chance to have a conversation with them, they cut straight to the point of whatever's going on. Yeah. Like there's no bullshit with the straight edge. Well, because there's no like, alcohol or any other shit up in their head to confuse yeah. anything. It's just a fucking. It's and right I remember, there. I remember what, one of my one of my sound guys was a straight edge for a while. He was so normal, we didn't even think that he was straight edge. A couple of months in, we're like, hey man, you never come out and have a drink. And he's like, yeah, I'll come out. He said, oh, but you never you never have a drink. And he's like, no, I don't drink. I don't smoke. And, I'm, and finally, yeah, I'm a straight edge. A couple of months later, um, he's and he's married and he's got his wife at home and he he's to have, has a relationship when he's out on tour. Um, and they said, like, so we're talking about chicks. We're talking about like, so, yeah, but like, if you weren't like, what sort of woman are you into? Like, what sort of chick are you go for? And he just went, my wife. <laughs> and we were like, oh, cool. Yep. Got it. Like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, so I was like, he was like, there's nothing more fucking scary than a straight edge, a man that knows exactly who the fuck they are. <laughs> uh, last part here, nihilism mixed with reason, another theme for the fest, talking about Henry Rollins. Now let's make this, because this this next one here is pretty lengthy in regards what is, hold to- Hold on a second, what does that mean? Nihilism mixed with reason. What does that fucking mean? Another theme to the festival? I don't know. Maybe we can look that up Like later. burn it to the ground because we all agree that it's the right thing to do? Because we have a reason to do it. But doesn't that lead to like burning down Woodstock? Like that leads to aggression. Well, yeah. 99, baby. Fuck it out. <laughs> all right. So all right, this is on. a long one. Yeah. So no, we're going to put ahead. a pin in this. We'll, we'll make this one. God damn it. We still have so much to fucking go through. Um, <laughs> all right. Do this. Do this. This last one, because then we'll pick mm-hmm. up the next episode with him talking about Primus and Nine Inch Nails, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> so do this la- do this one here. All right, wait, hold on a second. Because it, well, so we're not here really he's selling talking up about, the... Well, because here he's okay, talking oh, about actually, like, the commercialization yeah, yeah. of things. Yeah. And he's claiming like, no, that wasn't that wasn't the reality. And All he brings right, so up here's your, what's your up. Pep- Pepsi and Coke here. This is the reality of what it was like. Here we go. The band's vocalist 
was really impressed with the festival and repeatedly said this festival was a lot better than Woodstock 1969 one, which he was there for. Really? Fucking Henry the Rollins? Band. No, 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 no. The band. It's the, it's the oh, name it, of oh, the, the band. Oh, the band. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, cool. no, no, it wasn't Henry Rollins. And this is true since the other festival didn't have water and food all around. Fuck. I never had problems with food and it was quite cheap. I spent $5 on two hot dogs, which was a decent meal. Pepsi? Well, I drank a lot of water and on my way back to the buses, I was offered free food and drink, but I turned it down since I didn't feel like carrying it, exclamation mark for some reason. Commercialization? Not a whole lot. In fact, I am happy there was some provider giving us food whenever we needed it. I am happy for the toilets and the fact that they were cleaned regularly. The Peace Patrol was really cool people, just like you and me, who were simply hired just for the festival. In fact, the whole festival was manned by students and other youngsters who were not professionals or any sort of or any sort and simply agreed to work for a free ticket and extra spending money. I had I got into an altercation with one of the professional security people and his behavior was completely different compared to the people wearing the Peace Patrol shirts. I appreciate some of the crowd support on this and while I hope this guy was having a bad day and, it is, and he's, he's having a good life, what goes around dot dot dot. So basically, it was actually a very well organized festival contrary to popular opinion. Apparently. At least that's according well, that's to. The end of that. At least that's at least that's according to to this kid. So we've got a Tarami. whole lot more that we're going to get to. We need to get to a. Uh, uh, we need to get to an encore here, though. So let's uh, let's right. just uh, let's fuck it. Let's just jump right into it. All right. So what? Well, but we got uh, rap, his name is it. Brandon. He's the rock. Uh, uh, Say it. Finish the statement. Tune finish, in. Tune in next the time fucking for. Statement. He's uh, Brandon's the rock star. His name is Shim. <laughs> he's the guy. Class dismissed. <laughs> I don't know. He's the guy. He's the guy. Listen, guy. Let me tell you. Did I ever tell guy. you? Did I? We're going. This guy. Um. Tell the uh, five fucking thoughts. Fucking three stooges in the doorway right then. What? What? Um. The best guitar. One of the best guitar compliments I ever got was from Mark Tremonti. Really? Did I tell you about that one time? No. I don't think so. We were playing. We were playing with Alter Bridge. It was a co-headline. The only time we ever co-headlined with them, um, because they should be definitely headlining above us. And we were doing sound check, and, and fucking Alter Bridge was set up, and they had fucking walls of amps. Like, uh, and and for if you are a sound guy, if you're the guy that like I have to, I have to take the kick drum and the vocals and every fucking instrument, including the guitar, and blend it to the front of house speakers and make it sound like the record you want the guitar player to turn down and you want the bass player to turn down because otherwise their speakers fill the room with fucking noise and you can't mix the vocals above it because you can't control what's coming out of the actual guitar amp. Tremonti doesn't care about any of those things. He just turns his guitar up to million and then fucking plays. And it was beautiful to hear. Like I remember doing sound check. I walked in, I'm hearing him play and I'm like, fuck, that sounds dope. Like, damn. And then I did my sound check and I follow the rules. I have one stack and I have it at a normal level. And then I just plug my guitar into a few pedals and then straight into the thing. I don't run a bunch of pedals. I don't run a bunch of fucking amps. I just have a really good amp, my guitar, a couple of pedals straight in. Tom Morello style, right? Ripped it off him. And fucking Tremonti comes up to my sound guy in the middle of our sound check. And he's like, dude, okay, what's, what's he running? Tell me what that guy's wrote. What's, what's, why does his guitar sound that good? And he was like, nah, he doesn't run anything. And he was like, nah, come on. Like, like something's on, going on there. Me. You got you, yeah. He was like, tell me, tell me like what, what's the, you know, what you got a second amp behind the thing or there's a cool pedal. And he was like, no, he, he, and he, he, he said it. And this is the funny thing that I know it's real because the sound guy came to me and was like, Mark Tremonti likes my sound. And I said, fucking what'd he say? And he was like, I told him that I do nothing to your guitar sound. And I'm like, that's not a compliment for you. That's for me. <laughs> hey, pass the compliments around where you can get them. Man. Yeah. And I was like, that's dope. He was there because it was literally just plug in every, you know, and play the guitar as well as you can. And for my songs, yeah, I play them perfectly because I played them a thousand fucking times. If I had to play Tremonti shit, he would have walked in and said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Dude, you suck. Anybody, anybody who isn't familiar, especially for anybody who's like tuning into us now, like after the fact, and like all you know is Creed as being like the 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 butt of the jokes and things like that. 
fucking Mark Tremonti is the shit. Like that dude's guitar playing yeah. is amazing. Would, so if you get a chance, I would love like go go listen to his shit. Him. You'll know exactly what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, I'd fucking love to sing a song with Tremonti. And I probably I might have a shot if he didn't have fucking Miles on call. Yeah, be like, no, nah, I've already got one of the best true. singers in rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we don't yeah, need yeah. you. Yeah, we don't want that day, uh, Australia. Yeah. Yeah, you it. can only hit the you can only hit a high C. Our other guy can sing where dogs can hear it. Yeah, <laughs> fucking Miles Kennedy, fucking. man, that guy's amazing too. Yeah, does that make you jealous? No, no, <laughs> I'd be jealous. Who am I jealous of? I wonder who's a singer these days that I'm really, uh, you know, you know what I was realizing recently? I watched Jeff Buckley live a couple of weeks ago. That's a guy that I'm jealous of. Who's that's, Jeff that's like, you don't know Jeff Buckley. I don't know the name, Dude, no. there is an, there, there is. Okay. I'll, I'll, sh I'll, I'll fucking, you want me to show you one thing? Or we, I, you probably can't show it if we're recording no. it, but basically Jeff Buckley. there is a, a there is a thing of his live. Oh, where he I know who Jeff Buckley a, is. All yeah, right. Exactly. He's I, just in didn't, I, didn't, I don't think I ever knew the name. Yeah. He, he sings live. I'll show it to you after we stop recording for a second, where he goes from a complete guttural scream and then blends it seamlessly into a, the, the smallest falsetto angelic thing. Same note, same thing, and he just blends it from... Yeah! Was he and he does it one, all the way down to... Was he the one that yeah. also, like, you were... I think you were playing it for your godfather or your dad and they were like he, yeah. he's going yeah. through some shit like they can yeah, tell they by this dude's songs that he's got some demons what they said was who is this i said it's jeff buckley he killed himself and my godfather went not surprised yeah that's it yeah <laughs> ah see i do yeah. pay attention it just takes me a little you while do. to uh you remember you, you remember my stuff I'll more than i remember, remember my stuff might all right, well, let's wrap up this uh, this encore because we're going to roll right back into because you guys notice I'm rocking the cross-eyed bear t-shirt there. We should do a drop bear. It's a cross-eyed drop bear. <laughs> oh, we can't do another drop. We can't do a bear. We got to do another. We should do a koala. We, we'll find I'm telling I, you, I think it's going to be tough. Topping that shirt's going to be tough. It's it a is. fucking genius I've idea, had this. Man. I've had this shirt in the back of my brain since I found out I was wrong about those fucking lyrics and she was not singing about a fucking stuffed animal she was talking the thing, about the the burden the cross eye bear yeah yeah the thing that i love about the shirt is that everyone's gonna have the same reaction to the shirt when they walk up to you they're gonna go like this they're gonna go oh my <laughs> god <laughs> well, everyone's so I, gonna have the same thing <laughs> so i shared on uh like my instagram and my youtube i did a, a quick short where it was me talking about how uh did you I know that yeah, so did you know? It. Thanks for watching my stuff, buddy. So did you know that? Alanis I wish I Morissette, could say the same. I watch your shit too. I watch you. Okay. Oh fuck. Hold on. I'm making a note for the next encore. Encore. What is this? Hold on. Oh, here we go. What's um, the note? I, I'm, I'll, t I'll tell you in the next encore. I don't. I, I don't want to. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll tease it now. But we're going to talk about how pissed you got at the Fall Guys. Um. But yeah, so yeah, see, you can see the look on his face right there. He already knows it's coming. Um, but there have been people who reached out to me and they're like, they've commented and they're, you know, they're like, yeah, hey, so I totally thought it was a stuffed animal too. <laughs> like we're yeah. right there with you. And yeah. I'm like, thank God I'm not the only one. Because seriously, oh, and if you want to see a picture of 15 year old Brandon with hair, it's in that video clip. That's the one oh. where I'm sitting there and I'm like, and 15 year old me. See, because oh, I did two. There was one that I did that was a I clip. didn't see that one. Okay, so there was a clip from the actual episode where we talked about it. Mm -hmm. I did that into 60 seconds. Now, just so we're recording this again, this is going to date when we actually record these things because this isn't coming out for a while. It's uh, it's actually 7 11 day right now. It's, Ju uh, it's July 11th. And right. um, I just recently put up the cross eyed bear, like a quick 60 second thing of me explaining it where I was like, mm. did you know she's not singing about a bear? And I was like, I did. And I was like 15 year old me. And it actually shows a picture of 15 year old Brandon with yes. hair, baby with hair. Got to say it. Can't 19. wait. And, is that and, why you, is that, when did you start growing the beard? Uh, the beard didn't come until shortly after I moved to El Paso. So I see, I think beginning of 2016, so it's been around for about so six you, years. Bef 
so before then, were you just bold, bold face? Bold no, only? I always had a goatee. There was always there was always some sort of a goatee. Sometimes it would get crazy fucking long. Uh, I braided it for a while because that was fucking cool. Um, <laughs> oh, there's pictures of that too, man. Trust me. And I Did guarantee you- the shit that I wear now outside of the cross-eyed bear shirt, in 10 years, I'm going to be like, what the fuck was I doing? Um, no, that's perfect. It's but, perfect. Uh, but yeah, so it was, I, I had hair. Uh, and it was the nineties. So I did the thing where you shaved it on the sides and the back and you let it grow down. Um, and I had that my, like my freshman year and then I shaved it off and then I grew it back and then I shaved it off and I've been shaving my head pretty much ever since I was 18 in some way, shape or form. Okay. And there's right. times like, and, you know, and there was times where I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to grow it out. My mom would get all excited. And then I get like into like day five. Your mom like, would get, why would your mom get excited she about that? Did not like me being bald. She was always like, you have nice hair. Like, would you please Money grow mom. it out? Cause she just like, why do you constantly have to run around looking like the fucking end of a fucking pencil eraser? Like grow your fucking hair out. <laughs> all right. We're going to wrap it up. Um, well, let's roll it. right in. Let's wrap it up. We got one. Yeah, we're good. Are we doing one more? Yeah. Oh, we're doing another one. Yes. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, let we me, got. We're finishing a... this bitch up. Do you got to go? Okay. Go can I just again? take? Can I, I got to take a piss and just give me I one saved, minute. Because I, I also. That. Okay. Can we? Yeah. Uh, can we stop recording then to talk about one thing before I forget? 